Welcome to a new Radiology Bits video. Today's case is an intermediate abdominal imaging case. As usual, when you see this sign, please pause to think about the images. Pause here. Now to the discussion part. The left liver lobe is involved by a large multiloculated cystic lesion that shows homogeneous low signal intensity on T1 acquisition, high signal intensity on T2 acquisition, with a well-defined and smooth border. To add to the findings, the lesion does not show any obvious enhancement apart from questionable thin rim enhancement of the capsule. So what are the possibilities? Hepatic cysts, whether isolated cysts or in the context of polycystic liver disease, do not have this complicated, septated, or loculated appearance. Hemangiomas have a characteristic appearance after IV contrast administration with filling from the periphery inwards. Abscesses from pyogenic, fungal, or amoebic causes may be suggested by the history first in a patient who presents with uh, fever, leukocytosis, is immune compromised, and the appearance would be different as well since the abscesses may have a thicker enhancing capsule and in many situations may have associated reactive uh, liver parenchymal changes surrounding it, such as uh, hyperintensity on T2 uh, acquisition suggesting edema. Hydatid cysts have various appearances. They may be unilocular or multilocular, with or without septations. However, the commonest appearance is that of a larger cyst with internal daughter cysts arranged in the periphery. Again, knowing if the patient presents from an endemic region would help. Caroli's disease is a type of colidocal cysts with intrahepatic dilatations of the biliary radicals. These biliary radicals may show communication with the biliary tree and may show a central enhancing uh, portal uh, triad known as a central dot sign. Cystic degeneration in a hepatocellular carcinoma is also known. However, in most cases, the patients would have underlying chronic liver disease or cirrhosis and the lesion itself would show soft tissue components that are hypervascular. Metastases may appear cystic. In such cases, you would like to know if the patient has a primary malignancy. Biliary cyst adenoma or biliary cyst adenocarcinoma may appear unilocular or multilocular as well, with or without thick enhancing rims, thick septations, or internal nodular soft tissue components that enhance. Calcifications are also described. Trauma or iatrogenic causes may lead to seroma, hematoma, or biloma, and rarely intrahepatic pseudocysts may be seen in a patient who is known to have acute pancreatitis either recently or in the past. Resection of this abnormality resulted in the diagnosis of biliary cyst adenoma. It is important to remember that the features of biliary cyst adenoma overlap with that of the malignant counterpart known as cyst adenocarcinoma, and such lesions are to be surgically excised. The take-home point from this case is to remember that the clinical information is a major determinant of your differential diagnosis when you face a cystic liver lesion. Also remember that the number and distribution of the lesions may help in guiding your differential diagnosis. Checking for enhancing solid components or surrounding liver edema is another useful hint in generating your differential diagnostic list. And if you're suspecting a biliary cyst adenoma, this cannot be reliably differentiated from a biliary cyst adenocarcinoma, and such lesions are to be excised surgically. Thanks for watching. Please support us by sharing our clips, subscribing, liking our videos, or joining us on Twitter or Snapchat. See you later.